Hello everyone, welcome to Sneha Sarkar e-learning. I hope you all are doing good. This is my first tutorial class video. I hope this will be useful and worth your time. This will be a series of video where I'll be completing different theories given by different chemists before the modern periodic law. Therefore, today's video will be on Dobby Rainier Triad. Hope this will be helpful. Pardon me for any mistake. Without wasting much time, let us go through Dobby Rainier Triad. During Do Dobby Rainier time, less than 33 elements were known. It was for the first time when Dobby Rainier came up with the idea of trend among properties of element. Though his triad is not the most acceptable one, yet getting inspired from his idea of arranging elements, chemists researched on the periodic table and here today we have the modern periodic table with 118 elements known out of which 94 are naturally occurring and the remaining is big. Here we are, Ohan Wolfgang Doberanier. He was born in the year 1780 and died in the year 1849. Though this information is not important from the exam point of view, this is just for your general knowledge. He was a German chemist. Here we have Dobby Rainier triads or the law of triad. Let us see what this his statement states. Dobby Rainier law of triad states that the atomic mass of the middle element of a triad is the arithmetic mean of the atomic mass of the other two elements. Now let us understand what does his statement actually means. Before that let me just clarify what does triad mean. Triad is a group or set of three. Any group or set that has three elements in it can be said as triad. Now let us understand his statement. These are the three triads that he gave. And let us just check it out. The first triad includes elements lithium, sodium, potassium. Let us check it out where, does, where it is in the modern periodic table. Lithium, sodium, potassium in the alkali metals. His tri second triad includes calcium, strontium, barium. In the modern periodic table, we have calcium, strontium, barium in the alkaline earth metals. In the third triad, we have chlorine, bromine, iodine. In the modern periodic table, we have in the halogens here, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Okay? Now, let us tally his statement with these examples. See, as per his statement, it should be as when the first element and the third element's number is added and divided by 2, that is when we take the arithmetic mean of the first element and the third element, the result which we get should be the atomic mass of the middle element. Let us check it out whether his statement is matching with this example or not with this triad or not see here 7 the atomic mass of lithium plus 39 atomic mass of potassium when we divided it by 2 we got 23 and see 23 is the atomic mass of sodium so his statement is valid here am i clear in the second triad when we just see we can see that calcium's Atomic mass is 40, barium atomic mass is 137. When we add it and divide it by 2, we get 88.5, which on an average can be taken as 88. So we can just clearly see that this is the atomic mass of the middle element, strontium, it's 88. So his statement is valid here too. His second triad is correct. In his third triad, we can see that the atomic mass of chlorine is 35.5 and the atomic mass of iodine is 127. When we add these two numbers and we divide it by 2, we get 81.5 which on an average can be taken as 80. And see, the atomic mass of the middle element that is bromine is 80. His triad, his rule is valid in this triad too. So we can give it a green tick. These are the three triads which he have given and it's uh, this 
his statement is matching with the three triad. Let me once again review it. See, his statement stated that atomic mass of the middle element, atomic mass of the middle element of a triad is the arithmetic mean of the atomic mass of the other two elements. See, when we added this, this is the first and the third elements. When we added this number and divided by two, we got the middle elements mass number. Right? You have seen it. I have just shown you. Yeah. See, so his statement is valid in this three triad. I hope you understood his statement and how we related it with this three triad. I hope I was clear enough. We have the benefit of this Dobirenier triad. Let us see what's the benefit. The only advantage of Dobirenier research was that it made chemists look at the elements in terms of groups of elements with similar chemical and physical properties. As I said earlier in this video, he gave the first idea of classifying and arranging elements in terms of their similar properties. So his idea was taken up and uh, the new chemists they researched on it and tried to group different elements as per their similar chemical and physical properties this was the only benefit of his triad let us check at the limitation of his triad of his law of triad see the first one is Dobby Rainier could only find three triad that is total of nine elements as I told you earlier that there were less than 33 elements that was discovered during his time but he could only place nine ele elements in three triad the total number of elements were more than that of those decomposed in Dobby Rainier thread like I said elements having dissimilar properties were placed in triad he also gave some other triads but the elements did not have similar properties they had some dissimilar properties so those triad we didn't study and it's not valid Dobby Rainier was only successful in classifying three triad and was not applicable to all known elements like I said there were more elements but he couldn't give them proper place so these are some of the limitation of Dobby Rainier's law of triad that's all for today I hope you understood my explanation if you have any doubts drop in the comment section I will try clarifying it Pardon me for any mistake. If you liked my video, please like, subscribe and share. Stay tuned. Next video will be on Newland Octave. And don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified as soon as I upload my next video. Stay tuned.